What's up guys, welcome to the Macintosh Review. Is the iPhone 8 failing? Now that's a question that I have heard many times this week reading around on forums and on the internet. And in this video, I just wanted to touch on that topic, go through a couple of new news stories that released this week from the world of Apple regarding the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10, and give you guys my opinion on the iPhone 8 and iPhone 10 and whether or not the iPhone 8 actually is failing. So let's jump right into the video. So I do want to open by letting you guys know that I'm going to try to do these videos maybe once a month or once every two weeks to give you guys an update on the latest Apple news. This week I decided to focus on the iPhone 8, but hopefully you guys like these videos. Let me know at the end of the video in the comments section what you actually thought of this video, and I'll try to put more up more often if you guys do like these series. So today is October 19th, 2017, and today Apple's shares actually fell by more than 2.5%. Now this was due to a few factors, but the main driver of this drop was an article that was released out of a Taiwan news newspaper that actually said that Apple plans to cut production of the iPhone 8 ahead of the iPhone 10 launch. And there's also been a lot of speculation about the demand of the iPhone 8 with the iPhone 10 impending, and so I want to touch on these points and let you guys know my thoughts, let you know all the details. So Apple itself actually does not release regular updates anymore on their sales figures, but there was an article actually released in the Economic Times of Taiwan, and they did cite an unnamed source saying 50% of the orders for the iPhone 8 would be cut, meaning production would also be cut by 50%. There was also a few other analysts who weighed in on this situation from Rosenblatt Securities, and they basically said that there is an idea that 50-50 split could actually occur between the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus and the iPhone 10. And as we move forward in the year, the iPhone 10 could take up 60 to 70% of Apple's production line, leaving the iPhone 8 with just 30 or 40%. Now, other reports earlier in the week from Gadget Heads is actually saying that there is a lack of significant enhancements in the iPhone 8, and the iPhone 7 is actually outside selling the iPhone 8 as well. In this article, they actually state that despite the faster processor, despite the wireless charging, people are just aren't going for the iPhone 8. They're going for the iPhone 7. They want to save some money. It's about $150 less. And they do think the iPhone 7 can compete against the latest smartphones on the market, and they'd rather save the $150 instead of buying the iPhone 8. This report also mentioned that those who do not want to buy the iPhone 7 actually are going to go for the iPhone 10 if they want the latest and greatest, leaving the iPhone 8 almost in a little bit of a lurch that nobody wants to buy it. They either want the iPhone 10 or they want to save money and get the iPhone 7. So is the iPhone 8 actually legitimately failing? Let's touch on that question now. Now these are just news reporters, guys. These are all Wall Street analysts, and this is what these guys actually get paid to do. They get paid to speculate on the market, see what factors are driving the market, and see whether or not they think a product or a business are going to do well in the short term and the long term. And everyone has an inherent bias, and these people are in the game to report what they think is going to happen. So a lot of this is just speculation. Apple doesn't release numbers anymore, so as of now, we do not have a solid figure. We probably will not get a solid figure. But I do have to say, after watching YouTube reviews, guys, after reading about the iPhone 8, a lot of people actually are buying the iPhone 8. It's just they're going online. They're going to buy it a few weeks after it was released in person. There's nothing wrong with the iPhone 8 itself. There's just not as big of a rush to go out and buy it on the first day it's available because the features just aren't really that different. Wireless charging, for example, you can add to a device using a G-pad and a case for about $30 on Amazon. The design as well is very, very similar to the iPhone 7 and iPhone 6S, which I have right here. And the camera upgrades really aren't too noticeable unless you have the devices side by side. Now, all that being said, the iPhone 8 is definitely better than the iPhone 7. It has all these internal upgrades. Apple upgraded it with its yearly upgrades. And if I was deciding between the two and they were the same price, the iPhone 8 is definitely better. Now, I also do not blame people for going out and buying the iPhone 7. The iPhone 7, you can actually save money. It's a great phone. It's a current phone that I use to this day. It really does actually hold its own next to the iPhone 8. The iPhone 8 is a better phone, but the iPhone 7 is not bad. And the $150 may actually force people over the edge if you do not need the latest and greatest. The iPhone 10. All of the internals in the iPhone 8 are about the same as the iPhone 10, but the iPhone 10 is much more enticing for the person who wants the latest and greatest of the iPhone. It's got the all new design, the full screen display, and it just looks very futuristic. It is the future. It's got the face ID and it is all new Apple technology. And that actually is enough to push the high end user over the edge and buying the iPhone 10 as opposed to the iPhone 8. So like I said, the iPhone 8 is in limbo, but is it actually failing? No, 
I definitely do not think it is failing. Apple is selling these. They are selling them regularly. I've seen tons of YouTube reviews on the iPhone 8. A lot of people went out and bought this phone. The iPhone 8 was not created to build enthusiasm. The iPhone 8 was actually built to be the best solid phone for those who want to keep Touch ID and have a great iPhone without actually upgrading to the totally new technology. It's for those who like something familiar. They don't want a completely new device. They don't want to have to learn a new system. They don't want to deal with losing Touch ID. They don't want to pay a thousand dollars. Those are the factors that actually would make someone buy the iPhone 8. Now we've become accustomed to the iPhone actually selling out on the first day, actually being a huge smash hit, everyone having to go get it on the first day it's released. Now just because the iPhone 8 is not like that does not mean it is a failure. All of this is speculation through these articles and I do think the iPhone 8 will continue to sell. The one X factor though is the iPhone 10. When that is released, it will really show us a lot about the iPhone 8. If the iPhone 8 continues to sell, then we know that the iPhone 8 is the device that we want to keep around for a while. It is familiar and a lot of people will like it. Now even if the iPhone 8 dips in sales significantly when the iPhone 10 is released, it's not a failure. It is there, it's the latest and greatest with Touch ID, and it is selling, it's just not selling as good as the other iPhone. You have to remember when you're comparing iPhones against other iPhones, the iPhone is the best selling product in the entire market, guys, of all time. It's very, very hard to stack up like that. People like to say that Apple is failing if they do not actually match the hype every single year. Now I do have to say, every single iPhone, including the iPhone 10, was not as hyped as the original iPhone or early iPhones. It's almost like the upgrade in the internet from going from dial-up to DSL to broadband internet, guys. Obviously, any improvement over broadband is going to be very, very good. It's going to be awesome. You're going to love it, but it's not going to be as good as the jump from the dial-up to the DSL internet, guys. People just aren't going to be as enthused. So overall, I think the iPhone 8 is a great device. I do think it's going to be successful on the market. I will be getting the iPhone 10, however, and it'll be interesting to see how the iPhone 8 actually sells when the iPhone 10 is available. So I do recommend both the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8. If you guys have bought one or you do want to buy one in the future, go ahead and leave a comment in the description. I would love to hear your thoughts and see which phone you're going for, see why you bought it, see why you didn't buy the other one. So let me know. I will also list my Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Instagram, Patreon page, and other social media links in the description. Definitely follow me there, guys. Definitely helps me out. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.